This device is known as a turbocharger, often referred to as a turbo. It serves as a gas compressor in a type of forced induction employed to direct air into an internal combustion engine. Its primary function is to compress the intake gas, thereby increasing the volume of air entering the engine and consequently generating more power for a given engine size. To understand its structure better, a turbocharger can be divided into two parts, the hot side and the cold side. Essentially, a turbocharger comprises three major components. On one side of the turbocharger, we have the turbine, situated in the hot section, and the compressor, located in the cold section. These two components are connected by a bearing system that supports the turbine shaft. The hot side of the turbocharger is attached to the engine's exhaust manifold, while the cold side is connected to the engine's air intake. When the engine is operational, the exhaust gases, which would otherwise go to waste, pass through the turbocharger in a turbocharged engine. These gases cause a fan called the turbine to spin. The turbine wheel plays a crucial role as it converts the combination of heat and pressure into rotational force. As a result of this rotation, the turbine shaft and, subsequently, the compressor wheel also start spinning. The compressor wheel and the turbine wheel are fixed together through a common shaft, ensuring that when the turbine wheel spins, the compressor wheel also rotates in sync. The primary function of the compressor and the turbocharger is to draw air in, compress it, and then push it into the engine's intake manifold, ultimately reaching the combustion chamber. This compression of air plays a vital role in enhancing the power output of turbocharged engines under normal atmospheric pressure. The difference between the atmospheric pressure and the pressure of air provided by the turbocharger is known as boost and is measured in pounds per square inch. Typically, a turbocharger provides a boost of around 6 to 8 pounds per square inch. Considering that normal atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch, the engine receives approximately 50% more air with the turbocharger, leading to an expected 50% increase in power. However, due to some inefficiencies, the actual improvement might be around 30 to 40%. Increasing the amount of air and fuel an engine can burn is a common method to achieve more power. This can be done by adding more cylinders or enlarging the existing ones. However, such modifications may not always be feasible. In such cases, a turbocharger offers a simple and more compact way to boost engine power. Historically, turbochargers were highly regarded for their ability to enhance horsepower, making them popular in racing and high-performance sports cars. In modern times, turbochargers have evolved to not only increase horsepower but also improve fuel economy, making smaller engines more efficient and capable of higher speeds on highways. Other significant components of a turbocharger include the wastegate, intercooler, bearing system, and oil supply. The wastegate serves as a valve that regulates the flow of exhaust gases through the turbine. Its primary purpose is to control the boost pressure and prevent the turbocharger from overspeeding. The intercooler comes into play by cooling the compressed air from the compressor before it enters the engine. This cooling process increases the air density, resulting in more oxygen available for combustion, thereby generating more power from the engine. Regarding the oil supply and drain components, the turbocharger requires proper lubrication and cooling, hence, it is connected to the engine's oil supply system, which ensures that the bearings and shaft receive sufficient lubrication and cooling. Additionally, there is a drain system to remove the oil that has circulated through the turbo. The bearing system comprises a set of bearings that play a crucial role in supporting the shaft enabling it to rotate smoothly and efficiently. Moreover, this system helps maintain the turbocharger's optimal operating conditions. Before the turbocharger's invention, forced induction was achievable solely through mechanically powered superchargers. The use of superchargers dates back to 1878 when several supercharged two-stroke gas engines were constructed based on the design by Scottish engineer Dougal Clerk. However, the true inception of turbochargers began around 1905 when Swiss engineer Alfred Butchie introduced a prototype to increase the power of a diesel engine. In his early years, Alfred became captivated by the challenge of enhancing combustion engine efficiency, especially concerning exhaust heat loss. It took him two decades to develop the first successful exhaust gas turbocharging system, which was effectively applied to a diesel engine and resulted in a remarkable power increase of over 40%. In the past, these early devices were known as turbo superchargers, as all forced induction Induction devices were categorized as superchargers during that time. During World War I, as airplanes entered the skies, engineering teams worldwide sought ways to enhance airplane performance. One significant challenge they faced was power loss at higher altitudes due to lower air density. To address this issue, in 1918, Sanford Alexander Moss, a general electric engineer, attached a turbocharger to a V-12 Liberty engine and demonstrated its effectiveness at Pikes Peak in Colorado, which is at an altitude of 14,000 feet. This showcased how forced induction could counter the power loss caused by reduced air pressure and density at high altitudes. In 1920, the first turbocharged plane was tested, achieving an impressive feat that was once considered impossible. A 12-cylinder Liberty engine was equipped in a La Paire biplane, which managed to reach 33,000 feet without any loss of boost. Subsequent tests were conducted over the next year, with the highest recorded altitude being 40,000 feet. 
turbocharging was poised to revolutionize the aviation industry, and by the mid-1920s, turbocharged diesel engines also appeared on ships and locomotives. The technology for turbo design and manufacturing advanced rapidly during World War II. When turbos were extensively used on military aircraft to maintain power at high altitudes, making them faster and more efficient. In 1938, General Electric produced turbochargers used in Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress aircraft. Other early turbocharged planes included the Consolidated B-24 Liberator, Lockheed P-38 Lightning, Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, and experimental variants of the Focke Wolf FW-190. The first automotive use of a turbocharger was in 1938 by a Swiss manufacturer, Sora, on a diesel truck engine. However, widespread adoption in cars didn't occur until 1962 when General Motors introduced the Oldsmobile Jetfire and Chevrolet Corvair Monza Spider, marking the world's first turbocharged cars. The Oldsmobile Jetfire featured a 3.5-liter eight-cylinder engine that worked in conjunction with the turbocharger, boosting the engine's efficiency by up to 40%, resulting in 215 horsepower without compromising engine durability or fuel economy. Despite its innovation, early turbocharged engines faced challenges due to the lack of advanced engine management systems. These engines were overly complicated, requiring a separate tank for turbo rocket fluid, a mixture of methyl alcohol and distilled water, to avoid engine knock. Neglecting to refill this tank led to complaints from drivers about power loss in their sporty cars. Furthermore, early turbocharged engines suffered from turbo lag which prompted the company to remove the turbo system from the Jetfire at no cost to the owners. In 1973, the oil crisis sparked a new focus on fuel efficiency, and advancements in turbocharging technology allowed it to gain traction in the commercial diesel market. In 1975, Porsche took a significant step by introducing their first ever turbocharged car, the 911 Turbo, featuring a 3-liter engine producing 276 brake horsepower. The 911 Turbo marked a groundbreaking milestone in turbocharger history as it shifted global perceptions of what a turbo Turbo could do. Shortly after, the first successful application to a passenger car came with the introduction of the Mercedes-Benz 300D in 1978. This model achieved low emissions and better efficiency, paving the way for wider acceptance of turbocharging worldwide. In 1981, Maserati introduced a bi-turbo, becoming the first production car to utilize a twin turbocharged engine, with two turbochargers working in tandem to compress the intake fuel and air mixture. The purpose of employing twin turbos was to reduce turbo lag by using smaller turbochargers. Typically, V6, V8, or V12 engine that incorporate two turbochargers would have each turbocharger serving one bank of cylinders. This configuration offers packaging and efficiency advantages. For most four-cylinder engines, a single turbocharger is sufficient, and sometimes it is used in V6 and inline six engines as well. Other configurations can involve the use of two turbochargers of different dimensions. A smaller turbocharger operates with lower exhaust flow, supplying more power at lower rev rates. As acceleration occurs, a second larger turbocharger builds additional power with the help of a compression valve that allows the larger turbine to create more power at higher rev rates. Another variant is where two parallel turbochargers of the same size are each assigned to a single bank of the engine, with the exhaust gases evenly divided between the two. You Bugatti even used a setup with four sequential turbochargers on a W16 engine. Despite these innovations, twin scroll turbos and variable geometry turbos were also introduced, aiming to reduce turbo lag. In a twin scroll turbocharger, the exhaust gases follow a spiral path known as a scroll as they enter the turbine section. This scroll design effectively separates the exhaust pulses, preventing gas flow interference. The exhaust tracks from consecutively firing cylinders remain separated all the way to the turbine's mouth. As the exhaust gases continue into the turbo, they maintain separate channels by entering two distinct scrolls within the turbocharger unit. Twin scroll turbochargers provide higher gas flow efficiency, reduce turbo lag, and allow engines to be tuned for slightly more power compared to the single scroll variety. These advanced twin scroll turbochargers can be found in many of the latest engine models. Variable geometry turbochargers feature adjustable area to radius ratios. Internal vanes within the turbocharger can alter the ratio to match the engine's RPM. At low RPM, a low area to radius ratio is used to increase exhaust gas velocity and quickly spool up the turbocharger. As the engine revs climb, the area to radius ratio increases to allow for greater airflow. The result of variable geometry turbochargers is minimal turbo lag, a low boost threshold, and a wide, smooth torque band. The 1988 Honda Legend was one of the first cars to use a water-cooled variable geometry turbo on its 2.0-liter V6 engine. Similarly, in 1989, the second generation of the Mazda RX-7 showcased twin-scroll technology, which effectively reduced lag and improve the responsiveness of its rotary engine. The history of turbochargers is far from over, as high demands for emission reduction and electrification pave the way for new technologies. Electric turbochargers are the future of turbocharger technology, presenting a novel solution for smaller engines without compromising power
power delivery while enhancing overall efficiency. Currently, two types of electric boosting systems are available, electrically assisted turbocharging and a turbocharger with an electric compressor. While there are challenges associated with this electric path, the growing market for hybrid vehicles indicates that electric boosting systems are likely to become widely adopted in the near future.